muscles of the pectoral or shoulder girdle, muscles of the arm or the brachium, and muscles of the forearm or the antebrachium. The first thing I want to do actually is kind of orient where we are here. So we have here the clavicle. That is your collarbone right here. This is your collarbone. If I reach and palpate the back side of my shoulder here, I can actually feel the spine of the scapula. Sure enough, if we look at the posterior side here, this is the spine of the scapula. So our scapula, or our shoulder blade, is embedded underneath here. And of course, our clavicle is up front here. So this is actually where I want to begin. Inferior to the clavicle, which is the big muscle of your chest, we have pectoralis major. Pectoralis major. If we go a little bit lateral to the side here, we have the Greek delta. We call this deltoid. Delta is triangular shaped. This is one of the large muscles of our shoulder, the deltoid. Coming around to the posterior side, remember what I said, this is the spine of our scapula. That makes this supraspinatus on top of the spine. That makes this infraspinatus below the spine. Inferior to that, we have teres minor, and inferior to that, we have teres major. Teres minor and teres major. If I flip this around, so we are now looking at the anterior side here. Remember, this is still in the back of your body, but the anterior side, you can imagine, is my fingers were the ribs, your ribs would be going right along here, okay? And what this makes is subscapularis, because it's under the scapula, subscapularis. The last muscle you can see, a little bit right here, this is actually a much larger muscle that starts and has its origins along our spinal column, but comes all the way up and inserts at our humerus, so it kind of ends right here. Little bit of a larger muscle, we call it latissimus dorsi. Latissimus dorsi, one of the large muscles of our back. Dorsi, think dorsal, like the dorsal fin of a shark on the posterior side. But this is it right there. The next set of muscles on the brachium, I'm going to start on the anterior side here. And what we have is biceps brachii. Biceps, bi meaning two, like a bicycle has two wheels. Bi meaning two, biceps brachii, because this is in your brachial region of your arm. We have a short head of biceps brachii that is medial. We have a long head that is lateral. Just think lateral long, LL. If we turn to the side a little bit more, we have brachialis. Brachialis is easy to remember. It's on your brachium. And then as we get to the posterior side, we have a muscle that has three heads to it. So three heads, we say tri, triangle. It has three angles. This one has three heads to it. We call it triceps brachii because, again, it's on the region of your arm, your brachium. We have a lateral head. We have a long head, and there is a medial head. So L, L, M, lateral, long, medial, L, L, M. Those are the three heads of the triceps brachii. The last muscle we have in this region that I want to point out to you is coracobrachialis. Coracobrachialis. Here's the coracoid process of the scapula. It runs down the length of our brachium, coracobrachialis. Last set of muscles that I want to review with you here are the muscles of the antebrachium, or our forearm. So I'm going to start right here with pronator teres. Pronator teres. Next to that, we have flexor carpi radialis. Flexor carpi radialis. Then we have palmaris longus. Palmaris longus. If I turn this over, a little bit easier to view here. We have flexor carpi ulnaris. Flexor carpi ulnaris, going towards the side of the ulna. Now, tucked underneath these, which is actually quite a large muscle in the, of the forearm, but you don't see it too well. I'll point at it a little bit here between these tendons, a little bit over here between these tendons. This is flexor digitorum superficialis. 
flexor digitorum superficialis. This one's going to come up and control some of the movements that we make with some of our digits. Flexor digitorum superficialis. You can see it tucked under there. If I flip this around to the posterior side now, we have extensor carpi ulnaris. Extensor carpi ulnaris. Extensor digiti minimi. Extensor digitorum. Extensor carpi radialis brevis. And extensor carpi radialis longus. Extensor carpi radialis brevis has sort of a shorter or brief tendon. Extensor carpi radialis longus has more of a long tendon. Those two together. Then we have brachioradialis. Brachio from the region of our brachium all the way down the length of our radius. Brachioradialis. One more back here. I don't want to forget. In fact, its name implies that it's by the elbow. That is Anconius. Anconius. And then the last two I want to mention are more at the distal end of the forearm here. We have abductor pollicis longus and extensor pollicis brevis. Abductor pollicis longus, extensor pollicis brevis. These are muscles of the antibrachium, the brachium, and the pectoral or shoulder girdle.